Yep, it's another video about a power strip, but in this case, it is this trip light isobar thingy. It has gone bad. It didn't go bad. There's a little bit of a story behind this. You see, for no real reason at all, I decided to make this cable, which looks horribly dangerous, but I'll get to that in a second. The reason for this cable is because I got this box, which is a step-up converter from DC to AC, and it converts 24 volts DC to 24 volts at 50 hertz. The reason for that is because I got a computer from Germany, or was it from the UK? It doesn't matter. Anyway, that takes 240 volts at 50 hertz, or 220 thereabouts. The point is that this box, although it has a grounding pin there, that's not actually connected to a ground, and this box itself has no facility to bond it to a ground. Strictly speaking, that's not necessary because this is going to be powered by one of my isolated benchtop power supplies, so this is not going to be referenced to the earth, but some equipment does want or require a ground, and that brings us to this cable, which, again, looks horribly dangerous because it looks like you can just plug it in to a receptacle and then get quite a shock off these pins. But in reality, that's not possible because the one that's labeled in green only has the grounding wire actually connected to this plug. And the one that's labeled in red, actually, I think I did connect the grounding wire through the whole thing, but the one labeled in red actually has the live and neutral connected to the plug. So no matter which side you plug into the wall, the other side is gonna be perfectly safe because either just the ground's gonna be connected if this was plugged in, or the live and neutral going to be connected to the plug, but not to this end of the cable. So, why does that lead to a dead power strip? Well, because my bench slash table was full of wires and shit, and I was very excited to make this particular cable, because I thought it would just be fun just to slap this together for no real reason. And uh, I took these two, these are just standard computer cables of the type you'd find with a C13 or is it C14? I always forget what the female end of that is. But anyway, one of these connectors on it. And uh, I got tons of those lying around. So I grabbed two of them to uh, chop the end off to make this. Slapped them down on the bench here and then picked up my trusty wire cutter slash strippers and snipped off the end of one of the cables. Turns out since there were a lot of cables like lying around here, I actually grabbed one that was in fact plugged into this power strip. Well, not this power strip, it was actually this power strip, which just as point of fact is identical, except for my label. And that caused quite a short circuit via these pliers. And you can actually see it took a chunk out of them right there where the, uh, where the arc occurred. So fortunately these are well insulated electrician's pliers and uh, I was uninjured, which uh, is more luck than planning, of course, because this was a complete cock up on my part. And uh, it did manage to completely blow up this power strip. It didn't just trip the breaker. It actually blew out some internal components. And I haven't even investigated, so I'm not sure which components in particular were blown out. But uh, yeah, not quite ideal. Now, the thing is, I don't know which components were damaged, but almost certainly I don't have replacements for those components. I don't need these to be highly protective. I don't need all their surge suppression and spike protection and all that shit necessarily. Um, I just got these because they were on eBay, brand new, but really, really cheap. Because I think these usually sell for like 80 bucks a piece, something along those lines. That was ridiculous. And I got the pair of them for significantly less than that. It was on an auction, and uh, I think I just got lucky. So I don't really need this to have all the protection that it has. So... What I'm actually going to do in this project is look into removing all the protective circuitry and just turn this into a standard-ass power strip where it just goes from the input power connection through the switch, which is also the circuit breaker, and then to the receptacles and just clean out the rest of the insides of this thing, if feasible. And just sort of for funsies, I'm going to put this ammeter probably right here inside the case because it will fit once all the... Uh, circuitry gubbins are removed and that's just for fun more than anything because it would just be more boring if i removed all the crap from it without adding anything back in so uh yeah that's my plan 
And I guess I will now open up the power strip and we'll see what's inside. I haven't opened this exact model yet, though I have opened some trip light ISO bars before. In fact, I repaired a couple on a separate video, which I think is on my extras channel because it was a live stream and I never edited that together, I think. Without further ado, let me take off my big bad label. And in case you're wondering, I label maybe not all but a lot of my power strips because um you can see this one has a red label and the cable is marked with a red piece of tape and a red zip tie and obviously blue on this one and that's because if they're both plugged into the same set of receptacles or same power strip upstream i know which one's which it's it's kind of overkill it's kind of unnecessary this one's even labeled trip light iso bar 2 i know this label's kind of fucked up and that corresponds to this label, Trip Light Iso Bar 2. So uh, I can extra know which is which. And that's in case I have another power strip with a similar plug that's also labeled blue. This way it's very specific. Really unnecessary, I mean technically, but I just like labeling cables. I, I It's like zen for me, just cutting the tape, wrapping the tape, putting the zip tie, blah, blah, blah. And you can get a lot of combinations of course, using colored electrical tape and colored zip ties. So this way, no two cables likely to be the same, especially since most of my Ethernet cables and other sorts of data cables, and even some of my computer power cables, are in fact co have colored jackets themselves. So the permutations are not endless, but significant. So to take apart these ISO bars is relatively easy. There's two plates on either end and a bottom plate that slides out. So uh, I'm going to start by removing both side plates. I don't think I, I don't think I technically need to remove both, but I will anyway. Yeah, and there you can see kind of down the end of it. And this plate is, of course, attached by the grommet here. But that's not an issue. And then the bottom slides out to reveal all the protective circuitry. There's actually a fuse in this one. There was not a fuse in the other ones I took apart. Let me get my meter and just, I'll, we'll see what has continuity because I'm, I'm curious to see what blew out. But like I said, this entire circuit board is going to come out and these receptacles are going to be wired with, well, wires, hopefully. Now, one design flaw that I've found with these trip light isobars are these giant chokes. These chokes are actually very heavy, like physically heavy, not just heavy duty. And with two other ISO bars, I think it happened in shipping. They were probably banged around, and the only thing holding these chokes on are the two solder connections at either end. Like, there's no other physical attachment to the circuit board. And so I think just by them getting jolted or banged around, that caused the solder joints to weaken and uh, separate and actually killed two other power strips. These are very well made. I mean, the reason I like them is just because they're well made and because they're in a nice extruded aluminum chassis. Oh, so maybe this fuse is blown. Maybe it's as simple as that. So why does it seem very... It seems very loose at this end. But yeah, that uh, definitely has no continuity. Anyway, let me take out what I can from this and test some other components. If I can get to the other side of the circuit board. Alright, let me see if I can huck this connector out. It's kind of just buried in there and it has this boot on it. Which, wow, that is... That is really in there. That is a good tight connection, geez. And then the other connections are all going to the switch. Now, yeah, let me t see if those are just as tight. Yeah, you know what, taking the boot off is probably advisable first, if possible. Let's see if I can give the camera a proper view of this. There we go. And one thing which makes it difficult to service these is that the receptacles are actually soldered onto the circuit board. And in fact, on this model, it looks like they're soldered. There's a loop. Like, see how there's, uh, well, there's four holes, but these, the two holes that are, the two backstab connectors on the back of these receptacles, these loops are actually going into two of those for some extra um, physical connectivity, some extra, extra sturdiness. That's good, but like I said, it also makes servicing these a little more difficult. Slightly longer screws, although otherwise they look very similar. Uh, 
for the receptacles versus the actual case. All right, now this whole thing should come out. This uh, wires are a little... The circuit board's just like slightly wider than that. Now let's see if it'll slide out the other end, maybe. Oh, I forgot about the uh, <laughs> the LED circuit board. Yeah, the little LED indicator board uh, just pokes through the front here. All right, so here's what we're working with. There are the receptacles, LED board. Can I release the back wire connections easily and just sort of pull the receptacles off? That is the question. Actually, I was going to test components first. Let's test. Well, it's going to be hard to test all these components with this in the way. Yeah, let me do my best to get these receptacles off of here. And they have these little metal tabs on the side. Usually if you bend those or push them in, they will release. But I'm not sure if these receptacles were designed to ever be released. They might just be sort of attached once and then leave there forever. Which isn't game over. I can still clip them out. There's still enough additional holes here that if I leave a little stub of wire inside, it's not the end of the world. Hmm, I'm not really giving the camera much of a view. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm just pulling on the white wire and manipulating this little tab. I'm just seeing if it wants to move and if it does which way. It's not really wanting to move any which way. And I'm also afraid that if I pull it out or something, it's just not going to go back in and it's going to ruin the connection on this side. So I think I may just go with a little bit of a snipping there. And this is going to be a relatively irreversible process once I start chopping it out of the circuit board. At least the grounding screws are uh, properly accessible. Although I may just leave those attached because ultimately I will just want them all connected like that. Let me see if I can just... It does, they do use aluminum wire though there, which it's not terrible. I mean, it's not a current carrying conductor, at least it shouldn't be. But uh, just as I'm bending it and moving it around, it could snap but if that happens i'll just replace it with a nice copper wire now am i going to be able to get my snips in there in order to chop this out because it's actually soldered on both ends which yeah i can get out on this end let's see if i can oh it's not soldered on both ends it looked like it was now can i get to the other side somehow that is the tricky part can i bend this just out of the way enough Hmm. Possibly not. I'm going to try snipping out the little loop on the other side. Um, it's only soldered on... And it's actually only connected to the receptacle on one side. Which seems kind of weird then. I mean, I guess the loop still adds a little mechanical strength to keep from pulling through and pulling out of the circuit board. Let me just see. I want to snip it. Because I don't really care if I destroy the circuit board or damage the circuit board obviously since I'm not going to be using this so what I want to do is just snip that as close as possible and then I actually am going to release the grounding wire because I think if I just twist it a few times actually it's probably twisting inside I was hoping to like twist the solder joint and actually damage the solder joint but maybe I can get it to sort of work loose from the backstab connector yeah that's work. that's going to work it is coming out can't really see too well in there, but it's definitely moving. That's in there deep. Yeehaw! I think that was in that... Can yeah, I could, I could tell which one it was in, because now it's kind of roughed up around the edges of that hole a little bit, so I'll know not to reuse that one. Because once you backstab one of these backstab connector holes, you can't really reuse it once you work the wire loose, because it's... It might damage it, it might ruin the bite. Um, I kind of want to take this one out too. And this is why generally I, I'm not a fan of these backstab style connectors. Now back wire connectors, the kind where they put the wires in and then screw them and clamp them down with a screw from the side. Those are good quality connectors. These, you get very little actual interface between the connector and um, between the, um, cable and the little tabs in there 
I mean, they vary in quality widely, but the cheapest of receptacles that you can buy in the store are generally going to have poor quality connections on the back. Interestingly, the strip gauge, let me try to angle this to the light. Yeah, see that little indent? That's the strip gauge. They actually went in way farther than they were supposed to. Like, it reaches the bottom of the strip gauge just holding the receptacle like that away from it. But yeah, it's, uh, they pushed this through farther than the manufacturer would recommend. Not that that's necessarily the worst thing in the world, but uh, clearly it didn't cause a disaster. And yeah, I might as well take the uh, grounding wire off of here too. I'll replace it with some copper. There we go. And then this one, hopefully I can get my snips on both sides and just quake it right out. Oh, this one's actually it's really tight on this side. All right, same procedure as last time. It's a little wiggling. And there we go. Cool. And just for completeness, let me take this little piece of wire out also. And to their credit, this does look like copper. It's just copper coated with uh, tin, maybe. Some kind of alloy. But anyway, at any rate, it is copper on the inside and solid wire at that. So that, that's good. That's a nice quality touch. Uh, this is still attached to the grounding wire on this end. Whoops. Went out of shot there. Okay. Now these three receptacles are going to be pretty easy to put back in. Take off this protective plate this is to prevent... I mean, this sits between the receptacles and the circuit board too. It's not... Well, I guess, yeah, it could short out against these little rivets on the back there so but uh, it's also to prevent the the back of the LED board from shorting against all this metal work inside but that's not going to be used either now I don't think I'm going to reuse the LED board I mean I will probably put it well no you know what I'll probably wire it so at least the green LEDs turn on even though one of them is protection present which protection clearly won't be present, but I, I don't know. Probably look better with both of them on. So, yeah, since I'm not going to be using this circuit board again, let me chop this tangle of wire off of here. Um, this spade connector is actually will still be useful. I'm not going to need another ground, though, for anything, so I can chop this real close. Yeah, I'll reuse that spade connector. Um, oh, that spade connector is actually going to the chassis ground, and then we have this coming from the power cable and why is there a why is it spliced there i wonder hmm. no biggie i will reconnect all the grounds of course and i'll leave a decent amount of slack on this led board when i take it off get my meter leads out of the way and now the actual circuit board itself in case any of you are curious, I'm probably not... Let me just chop these uh, off the back to let it lie flat. I don't know where those just went. If any of you are curious, I'll leave this on screen for a second so you can pause it. Uh, let me just make sure I got a good, nice focus on the labels on there. There we go. That's a lot clearer. Let me move this wire. Actually, let me chop this wire off as well. I'll leave a little stub, though. There we are. So if you want to pause it, take a screen grab, take a look at what's in there. That is what we're talking about. And this is the back side if you actually want to trace it out. So like I said, I was getting no continuity through this fuse. Oh, that's why I felt like it wasn't attached on one end because it kind of, the attachment points there, which is means the lead from the fuse is going underneath the fuse. So just a little wobbly on that end. So it could just be a matter of this fuse being bad. I wouldn't be surprised if I blew up like a metal oxide varistor or some other crap that's in here. Nice thermal, a couple of thermal fuses in there. And this solder is looking a little crusty right there. In fact, quite crusty. I don't think that's from me because it doesn't look burned. It might just be a little bit of a manufacturing issue. Well, you know what? I'm not too bothered. It is what it is. That's going That's going the way of the world. 
Yeah, I'm actually, should I put the receptacles in first? No, you know what, let me drill the hole for the M meter. This is an eBay special, also quite popular on AliExpress. It is just a simple three digit, oh, it actually still has the protective film on it, three digit display. zero to 100 amps so it would actually display up to 99.9 .9 amps because there's a decimal although i don't know if the decimal point moves and it is rated max 380 volts ac so i'm not sure at what voltage you would actually start functioning and then it comes with this little toroidal coil which connects nope which connects thusly And obviously the toroidal coil goes around the wire with the, which is carrying the current you want to measure. And there's two screw terminals on the back for providing with power. And from what I've seen, these come in red, yellow, and green. I chose green uh, for no real reason, otherwise, the, other than I filled it one with the blue nicely. So yeah, there should be basically unlimited space, well, limited by the bottom of the chassis, but there's nothing to prevent to get in the way of that thing if I mount it right here. So I'm going to actually remove my own label and I'm going to end up drilling through the trip light label, which maybe I should remove it first because it's just going to chew that up probably. Yeah, but then there'll be sticky residue all around it, which that label actually left. But you know what? I'm just going to drill right through um, the middle there. I'll drill right through that dot in trip light, even though it's it's off center, though. That is going to bother me more if it's off center or should I actually center it with the switch? Interesting. I think it should center with the switch, at least roughly. I'm going to eyeball it, and I'm probably going to get it slightly wrong, which is going to piss off some people. I'm going to be using a step bit, but I am going to do a reasonable size pilot hole. This is my new step bit set, and uh, I think we're just going to have to go with the biggest one. And I want a pilot just a little bit smaller than the tip of this bit. That one should do the trick. And this is aluminum, so these bits uh, go through metal pretty easily, even fairly hard steel. So this should be a dawdle for it. And I did mess up a bunch of these. I had to get a new set because I messed up a few of my other ones of these uh, NACO step bits by drilling through um, steel electrical enclosures. So, yeah, vertically. See, the trip light label isn't perfectly centered vertically. So, again, I am just eyeballing this. It's probably going to look awful. But you know what? It'll work. There we go. As much as I love having aluminum fragments everywhere. Okay, now, of course, I'm not sure offhand what size I'm shooting for. Um, so I'm just going to go gradually up a few steps at a time. And I realize this is probably a better camera angle. That you can actually see what I'm doing. Well, that never happened before. I swear I did tighten that down. I thought pretty good, but hey, what can you do? Oh, yeah, he's at least, I would say, two more steps. See where we're at. Uh, one more. Did I go a little overzealous there? I've been known to do that. No, no, that was the right one. I just, uh, I did end up reaming it out a little bit so you can see the bare metal. Yeah, right, let me just finish out that step. And then just get it from the back to clean off any chaff. Nice and gentle. And I can go in a little farther. Ah. 
I think that may be good. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, the threads are going to fit through. Excellent. Nice, uh, relatively tight fit around the back. Trying to chafe that wire too much. And uh, let me just clean up these metal shavings before they get into things and short them out. And also, I'm going to, like I said, the, my label left some sticky residue on here. Let me grab some um, lighter fluid and clean that off. If you didn't know, lighter fluid, uh, just standard butane lighter fluid, is one of the best things for removing adhesive. Rubbing alcohol works well on a lot of types of adhesive, but this uh, is one of the best solvents for this purpose. At least one of the best household solvents. I'm sure there are better ones, but... Ew! Nuts! It's also rubbing off the... Uh, the lettering there, which actually isn't a bad thing because this won't have protection anymore. So you know what? This is all fairly meaningless. So yeah, screw it. Let's wipe off that uh, ink. And then we can drop this on through. Ah, the only thing that's fucked a little bit you know what, I didn't measure the top of this thing, and it's just slightly too high where this part of the chassis is raised. Like, that's actually molded into, uh, or machined into this, or extruded into this, more probably. And uh, it just does not want to clear that, but by like a fraction of a millimeter, maybe. Yeah, maybe by like a full millimeter, but... Damn, that sucks, because I could if I brought it just down slightly lower, it would have been fine. Well, I got two choices. I can widen this hole a little bit because there is a decent amount of play here on the underside. But if this comes loose, that'll ultimately make it fairly wobbly. Or I can just shave off a little bit of this just to flatten it out so it will pass by that. I'm leaning towards just filing that down a little bit. Although maybe this isn't perfectly round. No, it's pretty symmetrical. Damn. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to file off a touch of this piece of thing here. Let me take off this washer and uh, grab a file. I mean, I got close, but you know what they say, close only counts in horseshoes and pants shitting. I guess it's still better than having shit my pants. So, uh, I'm still going to consider this a win. Now, this has a little triangle symbol. It's actually supposed to be an A, because it has a tiny little... Actually, there's a little protective film on it. Let me take this off so you can see better. And it has that tiny little dot in the middle. That's what makes it an A, because the voltmeter actually has that same symbol, just upside down without the little dot, and that's a V. It looks so unlike an A to me, that at first I thought that was just like an orientation symbol, like this this way up. Which, to be fair, it also is an arrow, in that sense, but... Uh, so that, that does mark the top of this. This is perhaps where a vice would be a good idea, but you know what? I mean, I really don't need to knock off much. Just like chamfering this this uh, ah, this corner right here. That's probably not enough, but you know what? Mm, no, not nearly. Maybe I should just use a utility knife and just chop out a little that way. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I am one of those people who loses shit constantly. I have three utility knives and four pairs of these snips, and I can only really ever find one of them. They're all just kind of floating around. My other blade was pretty dull, so I figure... Why not throw a new one in there for this? Be as neat as possible. I can never find spare blades either, by the way. So I had to buy a new package. I'm pretty sure I had another package somewhere, but... Uh, I don't know, between the basement, the garage, and the rest of the house, I lose track of stuff real easily. So I'm going to try to cut towards the table. 
This is not that kind of soft, creamy plastic that's easy to cut, most sadly. Let's see, what are the chances I can do a straight line along here? Yeah, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to cut down that deeply. I think I may just have to just go with a chamfer. Okay, well, not the neatest job in the world, but uh, I don't think it's quite going to be enough either. Oh, it is enough. If I get it lined up, there, sitting flat, well, fairly flat. It'll be better with the washer in place. I might have to trim the washer too, though. I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to trim the washer. Well, there is a little bit of play in that. It's a little bit smaller. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim the washer as well. Because it's just catching that lip, just barely. Okay, well, you know what they say about the best laid plans, like that looks really sloppy, but fortunately it's going to be reasonably hidden by the raised edge there. It was never very good at the precise stuff, like... Okay, there we go. That's laying flat. Oop, should let you guys see me uh, screw that in. I mean, you can guess how that went. Sort of uh, straighten that out. Like it just says trip now. Which kind of makes sense, because when I cut through the wire that blew up this power strip, it did trip the upstream breaker. It actually didn't trip the breaker on this, it tripped the breaker at the power, on the power strip this was plugged into. Or was it a GFI? Anyway, it did trip something, so... Not really the right tool for the job, but... It got the job done. Okay. Well... Not so bad. Not so ideal either, but hey. Now actually, I can put this end plate back on just so I have this wiring in position. And then I can slide the bottom on and then put this plate on. So yeah, let me secure this back in place. But yeah, I am definitely no James May when it comes to tools. For me, um, oh, you know what? That LED, ha! That LED circuit board is definitely not going back in place. It's either that or the ammeter because it's too wide. It's going to conflict with it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's no big deal because this is to really demonstrate whether it's protected or not. The uh, switch is a, has a light in it, and this will light up when it has power. So there's plenty of power indicators. I don't really have any way to blank that off completely. I guess I could snip the LEDs off of here, and they just sort of friction fit into the back of this. But I don't really care if there's like a few little holes in there. It's not a terribly big deal. None of this has really gone according to plan in a super optimal fashion. So, hey. What I'm going to remember to do, though, is put the toroidal coil for measuring the input on the live. And it's just going to kind of hang there. Now, I also did not note how this switch was wired. Hopefully there's like a little diagram on the side. There is, but I can't read it. It's just one's going to be the input. I'm guessing the middle's got to be the input, and then one of the other two is switched. Uh, where is my multimeter? Let's just see where we got continuity. Okay, no continuity there, and then turn it on. And... We do have continuity, and then we should have some measure of resistance between these two. If those are the light, which should be on. Oh, but if it's, um, it's probably a neon, which is basically going to have unlimited resistance, infinite resistance at this voltage. So I'm fairly confident this center position is the uh, live in. And then um, I'm going to have to split this neutral off 
Well, I guess actually I can come out of this. Oh, I'm going to have to. I need to use solid core wire to stab into the backs of these, unfortunately. And this is stranded wire. So I'm going to go from stranded to solid. And then what I can do is loop this. Well, as long as I'm going from stranded to solid, though, I can split out for that as well. And in fact, I can use one of these wires here, which already has a nice connector on it for that switch. So, yes. What I will do is just trim this off, get that boot out of the way. Okay. And let me get some reasonably heavy gauge, uh, 14 gauge I suppose would do, solid core copper. Yeah, we'll go for the gusto, I got me some 12 gauge. I mean, I'm assuming that this, this, these fit 12 gauge. Oh no, use number 14 AWG copper wire only. Okay. Okay. Who am I to argue? I always keep scraps of, well, I don't keep every single scrap of every single wire or cable that I've ever messed with, but I keep, I keep a bunch of scrap wire around for exactly this sort of purpose. This is really old. You can tell the jacket's like yellowed on this. Uh -huh. And I'm actually going to need the black out of there, too. And I'm also going to need to tap the neutral for the M meter. Now, I don't think that will hold 14 gauge, so I actually brought a couple of scraps of thinner gauge wire. I don't even remember what gauge this is. Even though potentially in a, like a short circuit overload type condition, that could be bad news. Uh, it's in a metal housing, and the chance that this is going to just draw a lot of current rather than going complete dead short in which case it would trip the breaker, is pretty slim, so I think we're okay with that. Is this aluminum? I think this is aluminum, though. Hmm, not really a fan of the aluminum. But it does have this really nice sturdy connector on the end. So, hey. Ew, yeah, it's thin gauge, too. Oh no, it's co it's uh, tinned copper on the end. It, you could tell it's uh, it's copper on the inside. Okay, well that's good at least. It's also less than four, this is sixteen gauge, even though this is rated for fifteen amps. Do I want to be obnoxious and replace this anyway? I mean, it's a very short run. I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna deem it to be just fine. It's kind of going back and forth over to whether, whether to use wire nuts or these push-in style connectors. I think I'm going to go with the push-ins just because they're a little smaller. They'll kind of fit in here better. And uh, yeah, they're suitable for this wire and they should, and uh, I believe they're good for 15 amps, maybe 20. Oh, it really does not want to cooperate with the stranded wire. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, it really doesn't want to cooperate. All right. I'm going to go with the standard good old American wire nuts here. Because those are suitable for bringing stranded and solid core together. And get my stranded wires to mesh kind of nicely. At least as nicely as possible. And I have Wago connectors. Well, I have knockoff Wago connectors that I used in a recent project. I really like the Wago connectors, but for like actual high amperage, high current applications like this, especially where it might be powered on for a long period of time. Um, I'm not comfortable using the knockoffs. If they were the brand name, then I'd be cool with it. And it would be a little, I don't know, cleaner, a little nicer than this. I don't have any good size crimps for crimping all this shit together either, so... Sort of is what it is here. Okay. 
Okay, get that neutral connected. Nice. And then for the live side, what I'm going to do is similarly to steal this piece of wire with the connector and the boot on it. Weirdly, this does feel like 14 gauge. It's thicker than neutral wire, which is weird. But, okay. And then just for the um, ammeter, I'm going to use blue. In North America, or at least in the United States, I'm not 100% sure about Canada, but uh, blue is a perfectly suitable color for live wire. What you cannot use is white, gray, or green. I don't have gray anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. It's a little long-ish, though. There's plenty of room for extra cable slack in there. The position of this wire nut is ultimately going to be determined by how I bend this solid core wire to meet up with the receptacles, so... It sort of is what it is in that case. Um, but you know what I will do? I will bury the toroidal coils hook up, sort of underneath all these other wires. Because there's plenty of slack there. Keep that out of the way. If I really wanted to be neat, I would gather this up and zip tie it, which I guess I should. I am on television after all. Well, not television, YouTube, but, you know, similar diff. Yeah, let me get a small zip tie for that. I mean, it's kind of a moot point. I don't know why I'm worrying about neatness, really, because this is already kind of a mess, but hey. And also, I'm not really sure how I feel about that toroidal coil just sort of like hanging off that wire and rattling around inside of here, but I did just earlier talk about how heavy toroidal coils banging around inside the chassis of these cause other problems. But I also don't really know how I'm going to secure that. And it's kind of on that loop of wire, fairly sort of stuck in the corner there. And it's not, it doesn't really have too many places to go. So, uh, yeah, I'm not overly concerned about that. That's what I'll keep telling myself anyway. Use my wee little screwdriver to get in there. Usually, I mean, I thought I'd have a little bit of, you know, decent room to play with in here, but... A lot of times I'll wire these with little tails before I mount them in the panel, which is starting to see. I mean, I guess I could unmount this and then do that because it's just a little tight on this side. Doing the live wire on the other side is going to be substantially easier. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, this is definitely a heavier gauge, but is this just aluminum? No, it's, uh, it's definitely copper on the inside. I don't think you'll be able to really make that out, especially since it's out of focus up there. But uh, you can see this copper in the ends. Oh, it would help if I cut myself a piece of solid core wire, huh? And just for funsies, I'm going to use red. Make a nice colorful extravaganza in here. I'll leave it uh, a bit long. Red, of course, being another perfectly valid color for a live conductor here in the United States. And blue, interestingly, I mean, Europe, or at least in the UK, blue is neutral, is it not? But yeah, it's always interesting to me how uh, different color cho colors are uh, used for different things in different parts of the world. And I believe in the United States, although I'm not 100% sure because I never looked into brown specifically, but I believe brown is a valid um, hot slash live, whatever you want to call it, conductor color. I think, let me get the receptacles in there before I, pow before I pile any more wire on top of here. Um, should face... Well, which way are they facing on the existing one? They're facing with the ground towards the switch, just to keep it consistent. Ew, but you know what? I got to wire these grounds together before I put them in there. Otherwise, these screws are going to be completely inaccessible. So, yeah, like I said, that's going to be done now with copper. And, in fact, I'm going to do it in the same manner that they did, which is to say I'm just going to loop a piece of bare copper or bare wire. In their case, it was aluminum. 
between them. Oh. Ah, beautiful copper. And um, these oriented the yeah, those oriented the correct way. So let's start on this end. And if anything, I just want them to be spaced a little farther apart than strictly speaking necessary because I can get them closer together. But once these are oh, once these are tied in together, they're obviously not going to be able to go farther apart. So I will have a little bit of leeway. There we go. That should suffice. Let's leave that. Actually, that's, I mean, that's obviously way longer than I need. Let me just trim it down. I'll still leave it longer than I need, but just so it's out of the way and not flapping around in my face as I do this. Okay. There we go. Now we got the little grounding tail sticking out. Yeah, my original plan was to use this little spade connector for the ground. Now, do I want to chop out this? No, I guess I'll leave that because that'll keep me with a uh, nice length for everything to line up. So obviously I'm not going to use that spade connector after all. And instead I will just use another wire nut. That was a bit, that was a dumb strip. This is very elastic wire. I mean elastic insulation. Holy crap. I am really batting negative a thousand on stripping these, huh? Usually not this bad. And I'm actually just going to leave the ground for last. We'll do the live next. Before I completely obscure this. Okay, that's nice and tight. That's good. This connector is actually a little loose. I think I might have loosened it up when I pulled it out violently. Just, uh... All right, clamp it back down a hair. There we go. That's nice and tight. Okay, now the first receptacle is wired. And all that's left to do is jumper from this receptacle to this one, from this one to this one. And then uh, same for the neutral. And of course, I'm trying to avoid the backstab connections that were previously used by the wires that I wiggled on out of there. All right, well, that should be that. Um, looks normal-ish. Let's close her up and give it a test and hope that it doesn't go boom. Now, should I plug this into my other fancy pants trip light isobar and risk blowing that up too? I guess it'll be a lesson learned if it does. Hey, there we go. Well, it's a little hard to see because it's very bright in here, but that is in fact lit up and a reading 0, 0.0 actually does have protective film on it, which I'd be wise to take off at this point. And so once again, 0, 0.0. Let me get a receptacle tester just so we can see. Actually, I don't need a receptacle tester. Let's just make sure we got continuity to ground and all that good shite. So first we will do ground continuity. And just to be on the super safe side, I'll unplug it first. Now sometimes it can be a little hard to find the actual ground. Come on. I mean, there's definitely continuity between the receptacles. I just can't find the, uh, there we go, the actual metal in there that connects to the ground pin there we go nice beep to beep beep there and then just make sure it goes to the ground pin of the thing oh my god there we go 
So yeah, that's cool. And then plug her back in. And I'm going to switch over to voltages of the AC variety. And now we'll do some probing in the receptacles. 119 volts. Oh, perfect. Well, that's cool. Now I guess I can give the ammeter a little test. I just need to get a load and I'll be right back. Okay, you may notice they got a little dimmer in here. Uh, what I did is I plugged a bunch of my studio lights into this extension cord. And uh, I will now plug that into the trip light. And we'll see how many amps this is using. It is drawing 4.4 amps according to this thing. And these aren't hugely accurate. Um, they're not really meant to be. It's more of just like an indication, a general guide. Um, I have I've put two of these together monitoring the same load. And they've been within about 10% of each other most of the time. So, yeah, not, uh, not an industrial grade high quality component meant for measuring important things but i use them on my generator inlets just to get a general idea of uh, how much current i'm drawing and if the two phases are balanced so anyway thank you for watching uh this has been a trip light weird stupid video which didn't come out as well as i thought it would but uh it works Let's see I did put that after the switch. Yeah, I did put that after the switch. Okay. Wonderful.